I've been a huge fan of Electric Mantis for a long time. One of my favorite artists and producers. If you're not following him, you really should be. I'll put links in the description for everywhere that you can find his music. A little while ago, I was Googling him and I came across a Reddit AMA, ask me anything, that he did in 2018. And I totally missed this at the time, but I spent a few hours just reading through the whole thing. And I'll put a link in the cards for that as well. It is a treasure trove of helpful tips, tricks, and inspiration, everything from sound design to mixing, creativity to just staying excited about music. But there's one trick that he mentioned that really stood out to me and like blew me away. And I wasn't alone. So check out this response from another Reddit user about this same trick. He said, this whole AMA is gold, but this comment has actually changed production forever for me single-handedly. Literally just got here by searching Electric Mantis Reddit. Had a good feeling about it. Exactly right, my dude. Now let's walk through what Electric Mantis wrote in this AMA that totally changed this man's production process forever and really inspired me. And I'm gonna show you how I use it in this song today. Electric Mantis says, I call this process pushing and pulling, and it's all about creating continuity to your sound design. As an example, I may have a synth do an arpeggiating run from left to right while disappearing into a reverb puddle, automating the wetness to increase and the volume to decrease until it washes out. From that wet space on the right side of the ear, I might pull in a drum fill that starts with the same effects that the synth left off on. The fill starts very quiet and very wet, then pulls in from the right, becomes drier and louder. When you start applying this concept to smaller parts of sound design within your compositions, it has this overall feeling of call and response, push and pull, back and forth, which I love. This is such a powerful concept that since I read this comment, I have found this idea making its way into every single track I've produced. Now you understand why I've stolen this technique. And it's not just for future bass or other left field genres either. You can apply this concept of pushing and pulling, as he calls it, to many other genres. So let's walk through a few examples of how I've applied this in a song I'm working on right now. So first let's talk about this tom fill that I made. This is made from just a single tom that I chopped up and moved around and then resampled into its own little tom fill. By the way, I'm going to put all the samples from this song in a little mini sample pack, so go down to the description and download a little mini sample pack. You can see by the waveform on this tom fill that the toms roll from right to left and then left to right. Having something move from one side to the other in the panorama and then another element coming back from that side. Obviously this is just the same tom, but rather than having the whole tom fill be like one side to the other, I have it move and then come back. So it gives it this sort of push and pull and a little bit more symmetry. Let's do another example. Check out this weird unrolling snare thing. That's actually a snare being played through the simpler and I have it set on loop and so it's repeating very quickly. What I've done is I've automated the transposition so that it starts at a higher pitch and then moves down in pitch. But because this is a looped sample, when you lower the pitch or the transposition, it actually slows down the repeats. Then I resampled this into another audio track and I reversed it. So because it's reversed, it's going to be symmetrical and like a push and pull with the first thing. And in the context of that little spot, it sounds kind of cool. Next, let's move on to this little beepy bell sound that I made using Massive. Now you can see that I've automated the reverb send. So as it ramps up into the downbeat, the reverb increases. Then on the downbeat, well, on the, set, on the third beat of that new bar, I've got a gain dip in the reverb return itself. That's down here. Now what we're doing is we're breathing a little bit. The cool thing about this too is that I've got this sub drop thing, another sound I sound designed with Massive, which sounds like this. And that starts off with a wet reverb. 
So here's the reverb send going to the same reverb send as that bell sound. It starts off wet and then becomes dry into that next downbeat. So together, these two sound like this. I've got the bell sound going from dry to wet, and then when it hits the peak of wetness, that's when that sub drop LFO thing starts wet and then becomes dry. So it has this nice continuity to it, like you said. The other thing that I have in this spot is two different atmosphere sounds. One of them is a thing that I don't know, just an atmospheric sound, and the other one is like birds. What I've done with these is that I have panned them in opposite directions. So listen to the first one. Pan goes from right to left, and then in the second one, the pan goes from left to right. Now they're different lengths, and I think that's okay because it gives just a little bit of like not perfect symmetry here. And then they both cut out totally on the downbeat. Pretty cool. Am I still streaming? So to recap, the whole idea is using this pushing and pulling to create like a symmetrical call and response, moving, breathing, feeling to your productions. Let me know in the comments if you have tried this technique and I would love to hear if you've like adapted it with your own tips and tricks. Once again, I'm gonna export all the samples from this project, put them in a little sample pack. So go down to the description and download that. If you found some value in this video, I want you to do two things. First of all, go say hi to Electric Mantis and download his music you will not be disappointed. Second of all, please give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can click right here. And here's a video in which I talk about something that I call three-dimensional sound design. It's a way to level up any sound in any synth in any genre. So check that out. Thanks so much. See you next time.